Ladies and gentlemen, feast your eyes on the best looking t-shirt money can buy. Get off my TV, version 2. Now including Big Show, Kane, Ryback, and the Black Sheep, Braun Strowman. Available now for $19.99, ProWrestlingTees.com slash off the script. Go get yours today and join the revolution. Join the movement and wear it with pride every single Monday night during Monday Night Raw. Get off my TV. Once again, now available through my online shop at ProWrestlingTees.com slash off the script. What is going on, guys? JD from New York here. And yes, the Yankees suck, goons. It's baseball season. We're getting ready. But that's not the point. And loose. Sorry, bro. I can do that much better. Jesus fucking Christ. <coughs> Is number 108. There you fucking go, man. Number 108 of part number one of the number one fucking podcast in your subscription boxes when it comes to WWE, man. This is off the script. Thank you guys so much for joining me here. Episode number 108, part number one for Friday, March 11th, 2016. I got so much news, guys, that I might actually have to make a part four for off the script. So much news, but I'm going to try and fit it in all weekend. But before we get into the news, and it's a lot of news, I want to start off on a serious note here, okay? When one of my friends asks me to do something for them, whether it's a shout-out, whether it's promotion, whether it's to give them a jump start in a contest or a voting of some sort, as long as I am capable of lending a solid helping hand, I'm going to do that, okay? And I appreciate that my buddy Pico came to me and asked me to give him a jump start for this contest that he is in right now. He's going up against 23 other male contestants, okay? He's in a contest which is pretty much a lifestyle fashion contest, and one of his favorite bigger YouTubers, okay? 1.1 1.1 million subscriber channel actually chose Pico for the final 24 of this contest. And if he wins this contest, pretty much he's going to get everything that, you know, a fashion, you know, lifestyle, you know, you know that type of thing. He, he's, gonna, he's going to have his life changed completely. His, his life is going to be turned upside down. I, I don't know exactly what the main prizes, I don't know what the, what the grand prize is here, but all I know is, number one, that his life is going to be better off for it, and number two, uh, he deserves it, because he, he's a hard-working guy in real life, and when he comes on YouTube and does editing, he's one of the most solid editing content creators that I've seen, you know, his videos are, are fucking top-notch, and, and it's a shame that he doesn't get enough recognition, you know, he, he's got little close to 2,600 subscribers. He should be 20, 30,000. Easy. Easy. So he came to me and he wants us here on Off The Script and he wants me and everybody a part of Team JD to lend him a helping hand. Now, all you guys have to do, and I seriously hope you listen to me and take that extra step, go that extra mile and help Pico out. I'm going to leave you his Twitter. I'm going to leave you his YouTube channel and I'm going to leave you the link to vote for Pico in this contest, okay? If he gets enough votes, he will obviously move on to the next round. I I think he'll be flown out to California. I'm assuming this is what it is, Los Angeles probably. So we're going to help Pico get there as best as we can. I'm going to be promoting this all weekend, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Voting ends on Tuesday. All you have to do is vote 
for Pico, okay? His first name is Jason. You will see the list of people down below in the description as soon as you click that link. All you got to do is sign up and vote for Pico. First name is Jason, okay? So make sure you guys go out there, vote for Pico, and give him a helping hand in beating out all these other fucking clowns that are participating in this contest. That's what you guys got to do, okay? So do that for me, not only for me, but do it for Pico, and make sure you represent Team JD the way I know you guys can. And actually, go to Twitter and leave him some support as well. His Twitter will be linked down below. If you want to go subscribe to his channel to see what his channel is about, I'll leave you that down in the description as well. Good luck, Pico. I'll be here for you all weekend, brother. All right? Moving on, guys. Pro Wrestling Tees. Thank you to everybody that's been buying T-shirts. The, the new Get Off My TV T-shirt version 2 is fucking absolutely on fire. I, I've sold more T-shirts this month than I can even count. And I appreciate you guys. If you want to go get it, all you got to do is go down in the description, prowrestlingtees.com slash off the script, and buy your own version 2 of Get Off My TV, now featuring not only The Big Show, but Ryback, Kane, and Braun Strowman. 1999, they ship all over the United States, all shapes and sizes, men's, kids, ladies, you name it. 1999, and they also ship internationally. Join the movement, join the revolution, Get Off My TV. I made two videos this week about uh, John Cena and a physical WWE Hall of Fame going down in Orlando. John Cena, um, status for WrestleMania 32. If you guys missed those videos, I will link those down in the description below. Make sure you guys go check that out and show some support for those videos as well by leaving a like and a comment. The podcast on iTunes went up on Sunday talking about Roadblock and talking about Roman Reigns and another perfect role for him, in my honest opinion, at WrestleMania 32. If you guys missed that, iTunes, Podbean, Stitcher Radio, and Audio Boom. The link for the podcast on iTunes will be down in the description below. And if you guys are on iTunes and any type of Apple device, go to iTunes, subscribe to the channel. It'll be, you know, directed right to your device. You'll download that motherfucker for free. It'll automatically be there when you sign into iTunes and leave a five-star rating. We are right now a five-star rated podcast. Thanks to everybody in Team JD. So continue the hard work, guys. Thank you so much. Wrestle Crate. I will have a Wrestle Crate by Saturday. It's at the post office. The fucking mailman didn't leave it on my front door because he's a fucking skag. And I will have a Wrestle Crate this weekend. If you guys want to go check them out, the coupon code is now working once again. That's JD sent me for an instant 10% off. WrestleCrate.com and on Twitter at WrestleCrates. And I will have Juicy motherfucking steen right here on the channel talking about roadblock tomorrow so look forward to that if you guys want to go subscribe to juicy and see what he's about his link will also be down in the description below so thank you guys for that sorry i gotta get all that important information out to you guys but now let's get on to the news and rumors and something that everybody's been tweeting me about all fucking day the rumor that vince mcmahon doesn't believe in nxt and the NXT roster is very hesitant to come to the main roster. There is no doubt that NXT has been an overwhelming success. Not only is the brand marketable, but it's been able to create several superstars over the years and has built the most vocal and loyal fan base in professional wrestling. The most interesting issue with that is that NXT is essentially the brainchild of Triple H. But WWE Chairman Vince McMahon is reportedly critical of the brand and even dislikes NXT to a fault. According to GiveMeSport.com, not one of my main sources, so take it with a grain of salt, Vince McMahon has trust issues with the NXT brand and he believes its abilities to connect with the crowd or create new developmental talent. Right then and there, I know this fucking report is completely full of shit. They can't connect, or they fail to connect with the crowd. I mean, has this fucking guy from GiveMeSport.com watched the last NXT TakeOver special? I mean, did you hear the crowd in the UK? Give me a fucking break. Already, this report is deeming to be worthless. And they fail to create new developmental talent. Hmm... Baron Corbin, Finn Balor, Sami Zayn, Samoa Joe, even though half of these guys are, were already made before they even went down to NXT. Apollo Crews, you got Nakamura coming in. 
Kevin Owens, the fucking big man on campus, Roman Reigns, was uh, raised down in NXT. Seth Rollins, Dean Ambrose, the list goes on and on. Seriously, you know, how many more people do I got a name for you? There's, there's names on the roster that should be, be that should be pushed, but they aren't because WWE, for some reason, doesn't find them to be superstars. Now, already this report is null and void to me, but I'm going to continue on. However, Vince's perspective is that NXT doesn't have stars, being that I being that I just reported that Vince McMahon wants Finn Balor, so obviously he wants Finn Balor and he thinks Finn Balor is a superstar. So already this this report is 0 for 2. NXT doesn't have stars and can't draw significant money for WWE. The other issue is that the recent treatment of Tyler Breeze, now this is all true, the recent treatment of Tyler Breeze has soured a lot of NXT talent to joining the main roster, especially after the buildup that Tyler Breeze received on Breaking Ground, which was a great fucking show. Many NXT stars want to stay because they adored the passion of NXT and don't want to suffer the same fate as Tyler Breeze or other superstars that have struggled on the main roster. If you are in NXT, and I am just someone who loves talking wrestling, who has a podcast that has now exceeded 108 episodes, so I know what I'm talking about. You know, you guys come here for a valid, real, passionate opinion, and... I am being honest with you. The way the, the current WWE product is, if you're in NXT and you are chosen to be promoted to Monday Night Raw, it is in no way, shape, or form a promotion. It is a demotion. And that's just the way the current product is. So I can understand nobody in NXT wanting to go to WWE main roster, Monday Night Raw, and Thursday Night SmackDown. Many superstars want to stay because they, they adore the passion of NXT and they feed off the energy of the crowd. You're not going to have that type of energy on the main roster. You know, this is an absolutely amazing environment. And, and I'm not even, I never even visited Full Sail University. I never had the pleasure and the honor to visit Full Sail University or, or attend an NXT event. I can hear it when I watch TakeOver specials. I can see and hear the crowd on the comfort of of my own couch. I see it. And I can imagine what it does to those people, men and women who perform nightly for NXT when they're in the ring during one of these takeover specials. How that passion and loyalty and dedication from the fan base that thrives NXT and they just feed the product with that much energy. I can't, I can't even imagine what it does to, to the performers in the ring. I mean, that's got to be, a, that's got to be the hardest part to leave that that in itself makes the entire brand as special as it is. And I'm being completely honest with you there. The fans are what drive NXT. So I can understand why they don't want to leave. And the people that are on Raw now that have been demoted from NXT, they wish they were back on NXT. Tyler Breeze, I know for a fact, wants to come out and do what he was doing down at NXT. You know, Neville, the Ascension... These are guys that go back down there for a fucking cameo appearance, and they're treated like fucking royalty. Meanwhile, they're on the main roster, and you don't even see them half the time in a match on, telev on uh, a televised event. Like Monday Night Raw and SmackDown. You just don't. And it's a shame, because in Tyler Breeze, they got one of the most talented wrestlers on the roster. And I'm hoping, I said this with Joe on Out of Nowhere this week, I'm hoping that WWE sees the eventual value of Tyler Breeze... He is young. He's only 27, 28 years old. He's got a lot more left to go. <laughs> Too much left to go. He's still very, very young. And he may have to pay his dues on the main roster. I'm hoping it's one of those deals. Because Vince McMahon cannot be that blind to see that this kid is not that talented. He is absolutely sensational in the ring. Tyler Breeze. So I'm hoping it's one of those things where, you know, he's young and he has a lot more years left in him. And it's just not his time right now. I'm crossing my fingers on that one. Same thing with Neville. Same thing with the Ascension. I hope WWE realizes what they have on their roster and starts utilizing them uh, later on down the road. So, a demotion from NXT to Monday Night Raw. A lot of people are afraid, all right? And Tyler Breeze obviously has been the one that's been talked about the most as his struggles have been well-documented 
um, from NXT and his eventual demotion to Monday Night Raw. Hopefully this is just a rumor, okay? Because it's disheartening to hear that Vince McMahon isn't pleased with one of the best things going in wrestling that has created some of the biggest stars on the current WWE roster. Seth Rollins, Roman Reigns, and Dean Ambrose. You could probably add Kevin Owens to that list as well. It's hard to tell how much of this is legit and how much of this is exaggerated. But the Vince McMahon versus Triple H dynamic, which I talked about on part three of Off the Script last weekend. If you missed that, link will be down below. The Vince McMahon Triple H dynamic is something that everyone is talking about internally in WWE. It's being talked about even more since Shane McMahon has returned. The feeling is that Shane ends up taking an executive role that Vince would be playing Shane against Triple H and Stephanie. It's no secret that there were issues that led to Shane leaving the company in 2009 after Shane found out that Stephanie and Triple H and not Shane would be the ones to take over the company after Vince stepped down or, God forbid, passed away. The storyline for WrestleMania has changed in the last few days. The original script for the opening segment of this past Monday's Raw was for Shane to respond to everything that Stephanie said the week before. There was a line in the script for Shane that had him saying that Triple H and Stephanie McMahon had better make good on their promise to quit the company if he beat The Undertaker at WrestleMania. He was also supposed to say that if they didn't make good on their promise, then he would fire them the next night on Monday Night Raw. The entire promo was rewritten and no one said a word and none of that from Shane McMahon's mouth was said. It should be noted that the opening segment changes almost every week because Vince McMahon is so hands-on with Monday Night Raw. The word is that Shane got lost on his promo from two weeks ago, but most people didn't notice because Vince McMahon did a good job covering up for Shane. There is an underlying theme in the company with Vince not liking how he's perceived as the old, out-of-touch guy. He also does not like being looked at as being an old guy that needs to step aside so that Triple H can run things and make things great in WWE once again. NXT was cited as an example. There is concern about some of the rigid decision-making and the limited viewpoint about who can be real top stars. Triple H has said publicly that Vince loves NXT, but privately it's a different story, and there are many guys in NXT that Vince doesn't believe are money superstars. I wanted this to be the top story for Off The Script. I have reported this several times, and I tweeted my frustration logically and in a smart manner on Twitter. This was on Friday. Oh, Thursday, rather. This was on Thursday, and immediately, Justin Labar from WrestleZone.com and ChairShot Reality following me on Twitter. I am friends with him. I, I've hung out with him in person. I've, I've had drinks with him. I picked his brain a little bit here and there. He said that this report, everything that I said about Vince McMahon disliking NXT, and I'm relaying his message to you guys so that you don't get the wrong idea, this is a completely fabricated story that Justin Labar himself has heard from higher-ups and NXT officials that Vince McMahon loves the product, that he's very excited for the product and everything about him not liking it and doesn't believe in it and doesn't find to be any money superstars in NXT is all false. So put that to rest right there. That came from Justin Labar, okay? And I believe his word. Because he has been to the Performance Center. He has attended NXT shows. And he knows very, very important people in WWE. Okay, so I take his word as money. Now, my opinion on this. There are several WWE superstars in NXT that are money. Okay, I find Samoa Joe to be money. I find Samoa Joe to be, quite frankly, the best heel in the WWE right now. Have not watched his match with Sami Zayn yet. From this past week's NXT, 2 out of 3 falls, I am going to watch that in full with a nice cold beverage later on tonight. Sami Zayn is making the jump from NXT to Monday Night Raw. Hopefully it doesn't result in a demotion 
for Sami Zayn. I doubt it because Sami Zayn is just way over and he's way too talented and he, he's just got that Daniel Bryan-esque vibe where he's that small underdog guy that we can believe in. I believe in Sami Zayn. I think he will be perfectly fine on the main roster. We got Kevin Owens, Seth Rollins, Dean Ambrose, and your beloved Roman Reigns came from NXT. Roman Reigns was actually better in NXT than he is on Monday Night Raw. And you guys know that. I know that. Everybody knows that. And I just wish WWE would realize that. Apollo Crews. I've said this many, many times before. Watching him in the ring, one thing he needs to work on is promo skill. That's it. He has everything else. He's got the look. He's got the size. He's got the wrestling ability. And he's got the athleticism. This guy's money. He will be the next black WWE champion. I put my fucking money on it. Seriously. This guy is money. Finn Balor, you know, forget about it. Not even worth discussing it. Finn Balor is the future of the WWE. 34 years old, yes, but WWE needs to strike now if they want to capitalize on everything Finn Balor. Bayley is the John Cena of the women's division, not only in NXT, but WWE. I mean, if you put Bayley on the main roster, there were reports going around Late last year, that if you put Bailey on the main roster, she will grant more make a wishes than John Cena. Bailey is the face of the women in the WWE because of what she does and because of the support that she has. It's unreal. We've, I haven't, I personally haven't seen a female in the WWE be recepted and get that type of reaction like Bailey. It's amazing. So, right then and there, I know this is false. This report was false. And what Justin Labar told me, I take his word as money. So, put that to rest right there. The one thing I will say is we all, we all know WWE Creative is a shithole. We know that there's too many cooks in the kitchen. This has been documented all over the place. Labar mentioned this to me. You listen to Stone Cold's podcast. He says it. Vince Russo says it. Solomonster says it, Jim Ross says it, you know, all these guys who have been in the WWE and know people within the WWE and know the day-to-day -day operations and how they operate, especially Vince Russo, the stories that he told on Stone Cold's podcast in the last two weeks, Jesus Christ, if there's anybody's word you need to take and listen to, it's Vince Russo, too many cooks in the kitchen, these guys in NXT have proved to you that NXT will continue to do its job. WWE for the future is set. You want superstars to carry this brand when Vince McMahon is not around anymore? You turn to NXT. That's what Triple H has done. That's why I respect Triple H to the highest for what he did. He turned what was a joke into the number one destination that everyone wants to be in. WWE has now taken over what is the independent scene. WWE by no means is independent, but when you look at the independent scene, Ring of Honor, TNA, Lucha Underground, NXT is the place to be. NXT is the place to be if you want to move up and just advance in your career as a professional wrestler. And that's what they did, and that's what he has done. Not only with the Performance Center, but the brand as a whole. Everybody down there that has worked their ass to the bone, Finn Balor, Bailey, Cruz, Corbin, Breeze, etc., 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 you guys know all that. They have done their part. They have done their part, and they have shown you what these guys, they, they've shown you what they're capable of. And I believe in all those names. I believe that they can carry the flag of WWE and make it special once again. I, I really do. They've held up their end of the bargain. Now, if Vince wants them on Monday Night Raw, when that time comes, when it's their time to be demoted, hopefully it doesn't, you know, hopefully it's not a demotion when the likes of a Bailey and Cruz come up. Hopefully things get better. But we all know WWE is very, very stale, and it's just not exciting. It hasn't been exciting for the last two, three years. And that's due to the creative writing. These guys have done their part. Now it's time for Vince McMahon to do his part. Vince doesn't want to be the out-of-touch old guy who's disconnected with the fans. Fine. Don't be that. Listen to the fans. 
Listen to your audience. They are the ones that want the WWE to be where it should be. Okay? And these guys, there's not much you can do with them if you give them shitty storylines and creative writing is not living up to their end of the deal. A Finn Balor, an Apollo Crews, a Baron Corbin, a Bailey, a Seth Rollins, a Roman Reigns, a Dean Ambrose, and on and on and on. They're only as good as the creative writing for them. If you're going to give them bullshit to work with each and every week, they're not going anywhere. They will not be perceived as a superstar. They will not be perceived as the future of the WWE. And they will be perceived as a joke and a laughing stock, just like Roman Reigns is now. Vince McMahon needs to settle down, connect with his audience once again, and live up to his end of the deal and creative right for these guys or hire people that can creative right for these guys because a Sami Zayn and a Finn Balor and a Bailey and all these guys, they're only as good as the creative writing team writing for them. It needs to be a two-way street. All these guys can't go out there in the ring and perform and perform in front of a crowd that aren't invested in what they're doing. And the way we get invested is through storylines, storytelling, and angles. That's it. We want intriguing, interesting television. We want a reason to tune into Monday Night Raw each and every week. We want a reason to stay awake during Monday Night Raw. That's all you need to do, Vince. I'm speaking as a genuine WWE fan. This is not that hard. It's not that hard. NXT is the future. Everybody in NXT that's working their ass in the main event scene is the future of this company. And Triple H is unbelievable at what he does running this brand. I can't wait to see what's ahead. And Vince McMahon, I don't want him to be the old out-of-touch guy. I want him to be connected once again with his audience. And all this about NXT and him don't, don't, not believing in it, and he doesn't believe in it, and he's not interested in it, he doesn't like it, he dislikes it, all fabricated bullshit. So that is that. Vince McMahon is a fan of NXT, and he is a fan of what they are doing down at Full Sail University. That's that, okay? So I hope you guys enjoyed that story. WrestleMania, speaking of Vince McMahon, has almost sold out, and WWE sets attendance records. Uh-oh, what is this about? Been talking about it all week. I, I finally found the story. WWE has officially broken their legit all-time attendance record. They have sold over 84,000 tickets for WrestleMania as of 3-8-2016. Just a few days ago. Tickets are almost sold out. So if they want to get over 90,000, then they would need to sell standing room tickets only. 84,000 breaks the all-time real record attendance from 1992. They did... 79,127 tickets for SummerSlam on August 29th, 1992 in London's Wembley Stadium for Bulldog versus Bret the Hitman Hart. That was the show headlined by Warrior and Savage as well. The, uh, the 93,173 number from WrestleMania 3 is listed as their entertainment purposes number on internal documents, but the real attendance for that show was just over 78,000 seats. Even if they don't sell more than 90,000 tickets for this year's show, it's likely they will announce a number greater than the mythical 93,173 WrestleMania 3 number. Traditionally, WWE exaggerates their WrestleMania attendance numbers by 10,000 to 13,000, so I wouldn't be surprised if they announced something over 100,000 for WrestleMania 32. If you plan on going to WrestleMania, then you might have a hard time finding tickets on Ticketmaster. Many of the tickets were purchased for reselling on StubHub.com. There you got it. That's the latest on WWE um, and the attendance for WrestleMania 32 as of right now. They got uh, a little less than 20,000 to go. Can they make it a full sellout? Obviously, we'll see as we get closer to WrestleMania 32. What else do I got here? Vince McMahon. More Vince McMahon news. Very high on Sasha Banks. Sasha Banks is going to be a superstar. We all know that. That much is crystal clear to the WWE Universe because while she was being called up to the main roster, she was having one of the best feuds in women's wrestling history with Bayley in NXT. 
All that momentum has cooled, but it seems that the cream is rising to the top in the Divas division because the right man is said to be behind the boss. According to PWmania.com, the boss of WWE, Vince McMahon, is very high on Sasha Banks. And he feels that her work in the ring is better than a lot of the male wrestlers. <laughs> That's surprising. Holy shit. However, Banks has been working with Becky Lynch, and, v uh, and Vince believes their in-ring work has been a little sloppy, and yes, it has. This is due to my honest opinion, or in my honest opinion, I should say, is because whoever is producing the WWE women's division and the matches that happen on Monday Night Raw, there's too much micromanaging going on. If you look at their NXT work compared to their Monday Night, War uh, Monday Night Raw work, it is way, way too produced. I mean, you let these women go out there in NXT and they'll give you a five-star match. Any night of the fucking week. You go out there on Monday Night Raw and you're putting time constraints on them. Five, six minutes. They're not gonna get they're not gonna be able to get their shit in. They're not gonna be able to give give the crowd what they are capable of. Give them ten to fifteen minutes, let them go out there and don't produce them to the point where every little thing looks produced it doesn't look natural let these women banks and charlotte and becky let them go out there and be free if you can trust them down in nxt you can trust them on monday night raw to deliver the goods that's just my opinion on that but yes i agree with vince completely surprisingly becky and sasha have been a little sloppy working together there have been some avoidable botches in the matches and they've been told to slow it down. It's not a big deal, and it's likely that most people haven't even noticed the botches. It's the same idea of telling a musician to tighten up their work and make it more seamless. Agreed. It's nitpicking issue. It's a nitpicking issue that isn't going to derail anyone's push, especially with Banks and Lynch, and Lynch set for a triple threat match at WrestleMania 32 with Charlotte for the Divas Championship. So Vince McMahon is very high on Sasha Banks, and I'm actually thinking Sasha Banks is going to walk out of WrestleMania with the WWE Divas Champion. And finally, guys, to end this week's Off the Script, Mick Foley possibly returning to WWE in the near future. WrestleMania is going to be a full event. Aside from the talent from the current roster, many legends and faces of the past are guaranteed to show up on that night. There is no way Stone Cold Steve Austin is going to miss WrestleMania in Texas. He'll be there. He'll be at the Hall of Fame. He said it himself. He's going to be there watching the Freebirds get inducted into the Hall of Fame. The Rock has been confirmed for a few months now for a major role. We don't know what that is as of yet. Shawn Michaels will be there, and I have news on him and a possible new role for Shawn Michaels. Stay tuned to Off the Script for that report. The hardcore legend will be in Dallas as well, a.k.a. Mick Foley. According to WrestlingInc.com, Mick Foley will return to the WWE for the first time since last year's SummerSlam event. The report is claiming that the WWE Hall of Famer will return to Monday Night Raw in the next few weeks for an angle heading to WrestleMania. It is not being reported which feud he will be involved with come April 3rd, but Foley is going to be in a non-wrestling role. The expectation is that he will be used to set up a match for the event, and a popular choice could be ending up um, with the current Intercontinental Champion, Kevin Owens. Foley has also a deep and strange history with the McMahon family and, obviously, The Undertaker. It's not that much of a reach for him to get involved in the Hell in the Cell, given that's one of the most common reasons for him to return to WWE and hype the next one. If I was to choose a role for Mick Foley, it would be a special guest referee in the Hell in the Cell. Foley has history with the McMahons. Foley has a fucking history with The Undertaker, one of the best feuds ever in WWE history. And Foley, we all know, has a history with the structure itself, Hell in a Cell. Last time, Foley hyped a Hell in a Cell, I believe it was with Edge, when he was going in there against The Undertaker, I believe. And what he said and how he hyped that match was absolutely fucking unbelievable. If they bring Foley back, that's the role I want him in because he's in his element. He's got obvious history with everybody involved in the main event. It would be interesting to see him with Kevin Owens as well, but I don't think if Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens are going one-on-one -on -one at WrestleMania that Mick Foley needs to get involved in that. Much better off suited for the Hell in a Cell 
Mick Foley returning to the WWE, possibly on the road to WrestleMania. We've got four weeks left, so don't be surprised if we see Mick Foley on WWE TV. That is off the script, guys. Thank you so much for watching episode 108, part number one. I got more news than I can fucking count. WWE planning a huge push for Ryback. Yes, it's true. WWE planning a huge push for Ryback. Possible world title match with Roman Reigns following WrestleMania. Please, please inject me with NyQuil and wake me when it's over, man. Jesus fucking Christ. Also, rumors about Kalisto expected to defend the U.S. title at WrestleMania against that same Ryback. Please, make that a triple dose of NyQuil and wake me when SummerSlam happens, man. Because if that's the fucking case, I don't want any part of it. WWE could be bringing back the women's, cha uh, women's Tag Team Championship. Ah, I almost said Women's Championship. I wish to get rid of that fucking butterfly belt. Carlito Cool, possibly returning to the WWE. New Day turning face after WrestleMania. WWE could be planning Lana's in-ring debut for WrestleMania. NXT just lost their head writer, and he will be added to the SmackDown creative team. Titus O'Neil quitting WWE. What does WWE have planned for Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn? And Seth Rollins' return to the WWE announced. When is he coming back? Which pay-per-view will he be at? I got all the news. Stay tuned right here for Off the Script. You're not going to want to miss anything this weekend. Thank you guys so much for joining me. Hit that thumbs up. Let's aim for 1,000 likes. For part one, man. I know you guys can do it. And make sure you vote for Pico down below. As well as everything else that I mentioned earlier in the video of Off The Script. I'm JD. Thank you guys for watching. And I'll be right back here for more news and rumors on Saturday morning. Until then, take care. And remember, fear the Reaper. What's up, Reaper? Love the beanie, bro. Talk to you later.